Welcome to Uncomfortable Conversations about Culture and Christianity. My name is Eric, and today I'm joined by Matt. Yo, yo, yo. And Jess. Hello, world. And Alex. I like your face. <laughs> Whose face? Which one? There's three others around here right now. I don't if you'd like to be specific. Well, the last one that spoke was you. Okay. So. All right. Well, wow. There we go. Oh, my it face. Is, it is a nice face. Is. It's well groomed. Oh, it does thank look you. Nice. Yeah. I did trim my Your beard this morning. Good today. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> I had an umbrella to protect me from all the rain we've been experiencing. Uh, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, but we should probably introduce Matt real quick, just because people are like, "Who's Matt? Whoa. Why is Matt here? Um, why is he wearing an orange shirt? Is, was he out directing traffic on the <laughs> parking team today?" I'm one of the it? cones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Matt, thanks for joining us. Uh-huh, uh, I, I don't want to just, uh, you know, introduce you as a resident, but you are a resident here that, in the residency yeah. program mm-hmm. at Christ Community Church. Uh, but maybe give us just a, a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm a resident at CCC. I've been here since August. Also, been married since August. Really? Uh, yeah, wow. Congratulations. yeah. So that's, that's been fun. Uh, moved up from Florida also in August. Uh, wow. Yeah. So it's just I've had a new identity here. So you are a Florida man. I I am mm-hmm. from the news stories, from yeah. the headlines. That's me. Now, whenever I see that headline, I'm just going to think <laughs> just of you. Think of me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Florida man escapes. Alligator in his bathroom. That's yep. yep. I'll just think. I've actually i've I've caught an alligator in my front yard. Before. Really? Yeah. But not your bathroom. Not in my bathroom. No. Oh. What? We lock the doors. So. <laughs> so do they know how to use doorknobs? I don't know. <laughs> Was this your first snow? Like first winter this, anywhere? This was my first winter. Not my first. Okay. So I've seen snow, but I've never actually seen it falling before because mm. I've got wow. family in Iowa and Minnesota. But this was my first like winter from start to finish. It and it was, was a good one. It was yeah. brutal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got here and we were like, what's a snow scraper? Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty rough. What's that for? Oh. Uh-huh. Okay, I, I, I can't help but ask. What, the alligator thing, you caught one in your yard? How was that? Well, yeah, so so I, I don't know how long we want to... There's, there's a little bit of a story to it, as you can imagine. Okay, now but, I need uh, to hear it. Yeah, so so I was coming home from school one day from the bus stop, and you know I saw my dad, he's kind of a bigger guy, uh, and he was running around the front yard with a five-gallon bucket, like okay. a paint bucket, <laughs> just like slamming it on the ground. And I was, I was like, what in the world is that? So I, I, I came over and I was like, what, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm trying to catch this alligator. Help me out. <laughs> five-gallon bucket. And I was like... Oh, I see it. There was an alligator, like a little baby one about oh, this big, okay. like sprinting around our front yard. And I, I tracked it down and caught it with a bucket like you would a, like a spider or something. Oh, and okay. Wow. Threw it in the lake. Wow. So then what'd you do with it after you had it under the bucket? Well, yeah, you, you kind of like get the lid and you shuffle it on and then you throw it in the lake. And that's, that's oh, what okay. you do. So you just took it to a lake and... Yeah. Now, I just need clarification because I've never lived in Florida. I've been there a couple of times. Are there alligator people and there gator people? You know, I feel like some people call like I. I'm, some people don't even use the ala. Like it's too tar- hard. Yeah, to I say. Feel, well, I feel like gator people. That's like like I don't know more. North, that's like Missouri or like mm. Alabama. Like, are there gators in Missouri? No, no, there's not. No, <laughs> what, what am I saying? That's like Florida. Zoo. We we like there's to talk reptile. about Florida as if it's like transplanted north. Mm-hmm. Okay, so everything north of Florida is southern, but southern itself is not really, or Florida itself is not really southern. Okay. So oh, okay. we use entire words when we speak. Oh, alligator! Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Alligator. Do you feel like f- f- my wife loves Florida mm-hmm. and I've tried to convince her several times that there are probably better places than Florida, but I haven't really been successful because <laughs> she loves Disney World and all that stuff. Those are good. So things. are you like pro Florida? I am much? definitely. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pro Florida. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've only lived in Florida and, and Nebraska. So there's <laughs> out of the two out of the two. I'm going to choose Florida. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay. That's good. Uh, <laughs> all right. So. Uh, we need to talk about our favorite color. It's important. Yes, we haven't we really discussed that on this podcast before. Our favorite color? Yeah. What mm-hmm. is... A lot of people are wondering. What is our favorite color? Jess, what's your favorite color? You look scared by this question. I do, because I thought the question was... Uh, no, what's your favorite color? What's that's your the favorite color? Yeah. To wear. To wear. Okay, I think it's different. That's different. It's, it that's is different. different. For okay. me, it's for me, different. For me, it's different, too. 100%. Really? Oh, okay. 100%. Okay, well, then what's your favorite color to wear? My favorite color to wear is my ride or die black mm-hmm. i love nice. black it yeah. goes with everything if you're in any mood you yeah. can dress it up you can dress it down you can add a pop of color mm-hmm. all right i feel like i'm do loving you have it. a favorite color outside of 
Creighton, Creighton Blue Jay Blue. It's just the, Absolutely. okay. If you're I thought your favorite color blue. was leopard. Mm. Stop it. Leopard spot. <laughs> That's a pattern. Yeah. It's called a pattern. <laughs> Alex, why don't you go? Um, I do also agree that the are different questions. What's your favorite color and what's your favorite color to wear? Although for me, it's the same answer. Uh, red is my favorite color. Red. red is my favorite color mm. to wear. I, I don't know if it's my favorite color to wear. I just remember growing up um, and my mom would always say it looked nice on me. Aww. And so that really, Aww. I, uh, and I grew up in a church that we wore a lot of suits, like zoot suits, like <laughs> colorful suits. <laughs> yeah. And I had a, like, I literally, I mean, I had a baby blue suit. I had a red suit. Like, and we're talking every, like shoes, like mm-hmm. these are red. And I think maybe even gator skin, not real, wow. but looking mm-hmm. red shoes. Maybe I'll, <laughs> I'll flash the picture pictures? sometime. <laughs> Alex's mom but, send them uh, to that me. That was, that was definitely my sure favorite. see them. My favorite suit. Cause it was my mom's favorite suit and go big red. Okay. All right. There you go. Got to get that in there. Uh, my favorite color is probably red as well, and it is mm. not, not related to Huskers. What's the, so that's common. That's Another weird. Thing you too. Yeah, I, I do like and when I buy accessories for things or whatever. I usually buy them in red, uh, but I don't really wear red that much. So that's why I don't know if I have a color to wear. I black is probably a default. Like I wear a lot of black mm-hmm. just because it's easy, but it does show pet hair, which is annoying. So you're always yeah. lint rolling it if you have a pet. Uh, Matt, what about you? Well, uh, I have a feeling this, this question was a little targeted. Uh, mm-hmm. what I wear and what my favorite color are definitely the same, <laughs> same answers. I, I love orange. Orange okay. is the best color. Uh-huh. It's just leagues above the other ones. Yeah. yeah. It's very bright. Mm-hmm. And if anyone is watching and not just listening to us, they can see you're wearing an orange t-shirt Indeed. today yep. and you, Safety you wear, you've been wearing an orange t-shirt for... every day since, uh, sometime in sixth grade. Yeah, every day. I know. I've never seen you without pretty a much. Shirt. I, that yeah. explains it. I keep it up. And is it well. a Florida thing? Because that's a, not necessarily not... a Florida thing. Yeah. Okay. Most How people did that in Florida start, wear Matt, different you've shirts. Got to tell us. How well, does so this... yeah, it started in middle school. Like like I said, there's actually a, a really intentional story behind this. Uh, so I, I was you know an insecure sixth grader coming into middle school. Mm. Uh, I feel like I'm about to get saved. <laughs> you, you might. You might. Oh, you yeah. just this might. You never right. know. But so so I was coming into art class for the first you know first day in middle school, and my art teacher started like. She she gave everyone like the color wheel, doing introductory stuff, and she asked everyone what their favorite color was. And so that was interesting hearing you guys say red, because most people say blue mm. or something that has blue in it, like green or purple. Like that is like by far, like I want to say yeah. like 95% of people that way. And so I thought up until that point, I liked blue. I thought it was my favorite color, but my art teacher went down the line asking everybody, what what is your favorite color? And everyone was like, blue, 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 blue. And I was like, what if... This is sixth grade mind. What if I only like blue because everybody else likes blue? Mm. So I looked down at the color wheel and chose the exact opposite color, <laughs> orange, and I've been proving it ever since. Aren't wow. you glad you did? I, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I had to. Dad. You've been waiting there. for that. <laughs> well, you. It looks good on you. I mean, I, I, I feel like not very many people can pull off the level I of can't. orange that you're wearing. Yeah, orange is not. My, not, my not mom yours. never told me I was. It's, <laughs> it's not your color, Alex. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, real final follow-up question. Sure. What about the flavor orange? Do you also the like the flavor? Like orange, like oh, orange oh, candy, like orange citrus. soda. It's, it's fine. It's Pump, not my favorite. Pumpkins. Though. Yeah. Okay. Pumpkin. Do you like pumpkin? The pumpkin? <laughs> I suppose corn? that is an orange flavor. Fall. Yeah. Yeah. Pumpkin spice <laughs> lattes. But orange is actually a thing, Jess. I don't know if you know. There's a fruit called orange. <laughs> I know. I just started thinking okay. of orange food. Okay. <laughs> we need to move on to headlines. Need to. How dare you here. take my job? I'm not. Sa- I'm just saying we need I'm, to move on so you can tell the people okay, we're going there. Yes, yes, I will do that. Go find Our, your red suit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring, come back with that. Okay. Since you told me, up next is headlines. Our one and only headline today comes from NBCNews.com, and it says Target halts sale of trading cards, including Pokemon, over safety concerns. My children are heartbroken. Yeah, what are you going to do on Fridays? I know. How are you going to find them? We had started a tradition of getting in line at Target on Fridays, and there's only a few weeks of school left, and uh, 
this past Wednesday was their last day of school. So we were like, ah, we can be late a few Fridays in the year, whatever. And we'll hang out and get Pokemon cards. And now they're not doing it because people can't have nice things. There no. was reports of people pulling knives and guns and other things in different states. And Target got a little And they didn't just Target this. Pokemon. I think they did no. other cards, and baseball on, cards. Honestly, other. I'm not trying to profile anyone here, and but maybe it's going to sound like I am, and maybe I am. But every Friday that we got in line, there was a different gentleman in front of us. Never the same gentleman, but a different one who was always spitting his chew in front of my kids, you know, and they're, they're just like, what? They were so confused. They had never been around as someone who was spitting chew. And I, I, I was explaining to them, it's like, oh, it's tobacco. They hold it on their gums. I was trying to explain what it was. It could be, you know, some people coffee. have do jerky versions. You know, there's coffee. There's spit coffee the jerky too. version. Yeah. <laughs> you eat the jerky version. Okay. You know, <laughs> so anyways, I noticed though, the correlation was like, I was like, is there some sort of crossover with Pokemon? No, they were there for like the sports, the, the select football Ooh. cards and other mm. things like that so so where are you gonna buy the cards now i guess i'm not i don't know oh, i shoot. just i mean that you can get them online then mm. um you know no jess you 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 were getting you know, in on this too for I your did. kids yeah i think i saw like on facebook like a west omaha mom's post that you have been taking your children there and I dressing think if them we're up we're gonna go there we need to ask why you're on the <laughs> west omaha <laughs> mom's group <laughs> that backfired real quick Okay, tell us your story. <laughs> so it was probably two weeks ago. It was a Friday mm -hmm. that I had gone into Target. I mean, you know, to get the normal Target mom things. <laughs> Toilet paper, stuff my kids randomly throw into the cart. The one spot, right? The, the dollar The spot. dollar section? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes. And I was, we we're probably like halfway through and this lady comes up to me. I don't know where I've got my three kids with me. Lady, when you say lady, a uh, random an lady? Employee, oh, an employee. An employee so we're talking... Uh, red and, and khaki. I'm not going to say what target, huh? Is this person wearing red and khaki or are they security? Red and khaki okay. mm -hmm. at this point. And she's like, ma'am, you need to stay right where you're at. Like, don't, don't move. Don't do anything. And a I'm gator like, might be coming. Why? <laughs> why? And she was just like holding me there. And she's like, I know that you were here earlier at 8 a.m. And all my kids are around. And I was like, okay, be careful the next things that you say, because my kids are there. And all of a sudden, security comes up to me, and they were like, oh, this isn't the lady. Mm. And she's like, this is the lady. She was here earlier with her three kids. And he was like, this is not her. And they like had a picture of this lady that apparently also has three boys that had been coming in on Fridays and bought Pokemon cards and then would go out and like change everybody's outfits and come back, and in. Come back in and have like her her kiddos and her buy these Pokemon cards. And I was like, I really don't care about Pokemon cards that much. And the security guy was like, well, you can buy whatever Pokemon cards you want now. And I was like, well, I am going to buy some now <laughs> just because I was like, we're getting some. And my kids, my kids also like Pokemon, but I wasn't going to admit that at the time. It was very heated. Yeah. And I guess it goes as a show. Yeah. I mean, maybe there is a certain type of person that buys cards, but well, could you're be, doppelganger, could obviously. Could be a mom. Wow. I know. And I think this is just another product of it's just the, a pan lot, the, the hype. The pandemic and people picking up new hobbies that they hadn't had before. This was something that they could do, uh, start collecting, mm -hmm. uh, creating cards. And uh, now it got out of hand and we got can't out do of it hand. anymore. Matt, are you, uh, are you a trading card? Person you know, I, I used to be, I would get, I used to love Pokemon cards, but Got I would just all. get them to, <laughs> Got to catch that's them it. I would just get them to stare at them. I never knew how to actually play <laughs> just any game. Look just, at them and go, yeah, I Alex like can, you squirrel. Alex can show you. <laughs> I also oh, yeah. collected them when I was, uh, I had that phase and you know, I went for the holographics. Charizard oh, yeah. was really a thing, you know, Pikachu. <laughs> oh. you know, I learned how to do the Pikachu voice, things oh. like that. Um, you don't well, just let I haven't that been go. there lately. If, if you can, if you speak like Pikachu and <laughs> talk so fluently, <laughs> that's a lifelong no, skill. You're, yeah, I do think closet. for Target though, this is. I mean, feels like they're trying to make a decision for yeah. the, the. They're losing money. It would seem unless mm -hmm. they've had to hire extra security and then maybe it's a wash. But um, I think for a company to make that decision to protect people, it sounds like over profit. Uh, that, that's cool. I guess. Mm. I don't know that it's, I don't find it as cool. You think it's publicity stunt? Well, no, I just, I just am bummed that I can't 
take my kids because i mean i think this is there's several isolated events that had happened but yeah it's like the community that we were part of were just like people who wanted to you know spit their chew and <laughs> <just> wait in <laughs> line <laughs> and get their cards it just wasn't like a threatening environment at all it felt it didn't feel scary or sketchy yeah. or anything so i i think it's a bummer that it was a blanketed you know across the nation all targets are going to suspend it where mm-hmm. there's like hey some of us target goers we're behaving ourselves well, as so a where former, are those cards going yeah. online, the, online i feel like that's gonna then, be even harder for people yeah to people get. are they're just gonna sell out immediately and they're not gonna get mm. any as a former uh, produce employee at target i feel like i can officially speak for the company okay okay okay, okay. <laughs> and we're doing it to save people all right great good glad to have that <laughs> cleared up well uh, nice. we'll be sure to call you for Incredible. any other further comments on the target <laughs> stories uh <laughs> that does it for headlines up next, we're going to be talking about all of those misquoted, misrepresented uh, scriptures that we see on T-shirts, mugs, and even maybe in sermons. <gasps> Does the Bible really say that? That's the question we're going to answer today. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start it off with a, with a good one. We've all heard it. Money is the root of all evil. Now, I'm not here to say that's not true. I mean, maybe it is. I mean, money can cause us to do some bad things. But I don't know where that scripture would be located. Is it potentially in 1 Timothy 6.10? Mm-hmm. Oh, is that it? That, is that, that rings is that, a bell. Is yeah. that where it is? Uh-huh. Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, and I think, yeah, part of this whole entire conversation is um, – there are things, if you've been in Christian world or ministry or a small group or seen a t-shirt, bought a t-shirt, went to a camp and they sold you a t-shirt, got it for free, whatever, bought a coffee mug, have magnets, all of those things in the Christian world, there are, you know, some phrases that I think we uh, assume are scripture and we just throw them around like they're scripture and we're like, oh, honey, here you go. Or I don't talk like that, but people do. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, honey. Oh, honey. The oh, honey people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we misquote them. So I think there's some we some we misquote, and they're totally not scripture. And we'll talk about a few of those first. And then there's some that are just totally used poorly out of context because they make us feel good. And so yeah. mm. that first one, money is the root of all kinds of, of evil. I think it does say in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he talks about money and you can't serve two masters. You can only serve God. You can't serve both God it and does money. does say for the love of money is the root of all evil. Yes. And I mm-hmm. think that is a, um, a difference in the love of money mm-hmm. and money, mm-hmm. you know, being, you're giving too much credit to money. And I think it's really about a heart issue there. Anyone else? I mean, anyone else? What do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, and it's uh, the the First Timothy six passage. It's it's all kinds of evil. Mm-hmm. So it's not like a blanket. Everything that's ever been wrong with the world is because of money. Like there wasn't any money in the garden. You know, uh, it'd be kind of hard to to pin that one down. But <laughs> yeah, where would you put your wallet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And some some are saying our co- our government is trying to make us all evil by giving us money right now. That's that's the whole mm-hmm. entire thing behind the stimulus checks. Oh yeah, and ah. the, and the only reason that they're giving people under a certain you know amount of money money is because those who already have enough money are already evil, oh, and they're okay. trying to make the rest of us evil. Oh. I read that somewhere. <laughs> Where did you? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just. Is this a Q <laughs> drop? Star- or no, it was not. I'm starting a new conspiracy. <laughs> oh, <and okay>. st- <laughs> Join my blog. Okay. I think it's just confusing to people. Like the, mm. the things that we're talking about today, it's like, we're already, we're on this path and we're trying to learn and understand. And then when we hear things like money is the root of all evil, we're leaving off part of a verse. It's so confusing, especially if you're not very literate in the Bible or you're, you're trying to explain something like this, that somebody just, pops out of nowhere it's like well we need money yeah money Mm -hmm. is the root of evil like that in itself like doesn't isn't even a complete thought but it it just has so much context that Mm -hmm. word love just being in there makes a huge difference Mm -hmm. yeah yeah well guys another one that i feel like is very confusing is um cleanliness is next to godliness 
And I feel like this is one where it can be taken out of context, right? And even like trying to understand that cleanliness. Okay, does that mean your house? Is that your car? Because like I'm pretty far from Jesus then. Just always feel closer to God (laughs) on your weekly bath. Yeah, right. Or maybe, yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like your own person. What is that? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Yeah, so. I mean, I like I'm still technically a college student, and uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, cleanliness is not something that has been a, a facet of life around me for some oh, time now. Yeah. Interesting. You know, it's, it's interesting. It's a little confession here. Yeah, <laughs> and so but I godliness guess godliness has. <laughs> I guess a lot of people base that cleanliness is next to godliness off of James four eight. Um, mm. Where it says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So technically, it's just the hands, right? Yeah. Like, as right. long as I'm using we my kind of... hand sanitizer. And then when I was looking up, I'm like, where does this phrase even come from? Because I hear it all the time. Like, it's very common, I feel like, in Christian circles or just, it's just like a catchphrase. And apparently it was something that was in like a religious track in like Hebrew or Babylonian times. So it was maybe written long ago. It's not in the Bible, but it's just something that was stated somewhere and is kind of carried on through. Yeah. And I think it can Mm -hmm. harken back to Old Testament. I don't know this to laws that were about, we just finished as a church, the book of Leviticus. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what made you okay in the standing and God's standing was being clean. You know, that was literally the title of our series. And so, um, so I think it can get this misunderstanding. And I think that all of that cleanliness that God was instituting was really to preserve a people, which is so cool that Mm -hmm. God is, thinking that way because they didn't have hand sanitizer and all of these other things that we have. And so Lysol wipes, Lysol wipes, you know, and <laughs> lots w- of things. Yeah. Lots of things. <laughs> Clorox. Do we just want to keep naming cleaning products? <laughs> Will you sponsor us? If we name you? <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's, that's a good one, Jess. Mm. For sure. Yeah. Uh, another one. Right. So uh, I've, I've heard this, this is kind of like a meme, uh, but it's also, I think some people take it pretty seriously, this idea, spare the rod and spoil the child. I think mm. Alex Jones, his words, <laughs> spare the rod, destroy the child. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what, I'm not a parent. I know some of you guys are. What what kind of strikes in your mind when you hear people talk about this? I've grown up in uh, pretty probably legalistic places where, and I am not, we're not going to get into a conversation about the proper discipline and and all that kind of Mm -hmm. stuff. Should you ever, you know, spank or whatever, that's not, we're having having a conversation, but I think people have used that, that maybe have anger issues that God Mm -hmm. needs to be working on in their lives toward, um, you know, Oh, I'm doing this out of love and, and it's really not, it's out of spite or it's out of anger or Mm. whatever. And I do think disciplining your kids can and should be done out of love, but what does that actually look like? And so I think that that the people that I've heard that from, or I've heard it from people like, well, you must not have spanked your kids enough, you know, otherwise they would be good kids. Mm. And, And I would say, you know, out of my family, um, I'm probably the one that got the most discipline as a child. My mom <laughs> would agree with that as well as saying I look nice and red. Um, <laughs> but I don't think there's a direct correlation. Be- I became a pastor because I got s- spanked a lot, you know, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sure there's a direct correlation. <laughs> Maybe. I-, I did go to a-, a school growing up, though, that was kind of like a classical academy. And we had what was called a stop board. Mm-hmm. And so literally it was... Like if you got in enough trouble and you went to the principal's office, you were going to meet your hiney was going to meet a board oh, wow. called and like your parents signed off on it and everything. Oh I never goodness. met the stop board. It never met my bottom, but it would like hang in the principal's office and I had friends that wow. met the stop yeah. board. Oh, it would goodness. just like hang there menacingly. Like if you, yeah. and if you got it, thing. like that was, that's humiliating. I can't even imagine that in 2021, but wow. Yeah. I wow. F- uh, the when the scripture reference there is Proverbs thirteen twenty four, mm. um, and I mean it. It's pretty close to that uh, in a lot of ways, but I <clears throat> I like how some other versions have put it where it says he who spares accountability hates his son, and I mm-hmm. think that maybe gives it a little more context or clarity mm-hmm. that it that you know you it's kind of like well if I 
I tell my kid there's consequences for bad actions and then I don't follow that up with Mm -hmm. said consequences, whether that's the modern day equivalent of like taking their tablet away or something Mm -hmm. like that, you know, then he's not learning that he, to be accountable and that, that, and there's responsibility in life and there are consequences that come along with that if you don't follow through. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think like, I think there's probably some cultural differences in the way that people discipline each other, mm-hmm. where the way that parents treat children, there's there's room for cultural differences. There's certainly cultural differences from here and now mm-hmm. uh, and ancient Israel. But I think like this one, what's really scary for me about this is like, I think there's a correlation between the way people like view parental discipline and the way people view the discipline of the Lord. Mm. Like, so when I hear Hebrews tell me that I'm supposed to rejoice in the discipline of the Lord and we think of the discipline of the Lord in a similar way, we think of how our parents disciplined us. Like it can get really messy. Yeah. You know, if I'm telling somebody to rejoice in this discipline, but the discipline they experienced was not uh, a joyful thing that produced character and, uh, and good traits in their life. It was like a, an abusive thing, you mm. know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I, this one is probably one of the ones I've been, it's my biggest pet peeve. And I've, mm. I've, I always have to wrestle through, like I've been in small groups and this has come up and, and, and usually in the most caring way, I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> and, and usually it's in, uh, you know, something you know, someone's sharing about a battle they're going through in their life, or maybe it's sickness, disease. Um, they just lost a loved one. They just got fired from their job. And, and because we love that person, one of the things that I've heard is, you know, Jess, mm. God will not give you more than you can handle. Mm. Like the God is just not, he's not going to give you more than you can handle. Like he knows you can handle it and therefore he's given it to you. And, and, Mm -hmm. and for me, that can be so dangerous Mm -hmm. for a lot of reasons, because I I think it, it continues to push a a bad um, understanding that we can even have in Christianity that we need, we're, we're supposed to go at this alone, that, our relationship with God is just a me and God thing, which there is definitely that connection, but our, our walk with God is a community project and, and, um, our walk with, with God is something to be, um, isn't just about us doing it ourselves. If we try to go at it ourselves or we try to muster it up in our own strength, Hmm. man, we're, I'm going to fail, you know? And so it actually forces us to, to not lean on God in that kind of situation and, and start to think, well, you're right. I, I can do this. If I pull myself up by the bootstraps, I, I got it, buddy. And that just, um, can lead to somebody not asking for help from community, Hmm. asking help from God asking for the Lord to supply the strength when I'm weak, casting my burdens upon him because he, you know, he cares for me, um, taking his yoke because it's, it, it's easy and light. And so, um, I think it's just, it's dangerous uh, to go there. So, well, that's, that comes from first Corinthians ten thirteen, which is talking about temptation, mm-hmm. which I think is probably, I mean, a different subject altogether. A lot, a lot of times this is kind of, this phrase is used as like the Christian Hallmark card, no matter mm. what scenario, whatever's going on, you're in the hospital, whatever, I can bring you this f- phrase, you know, God's not give you more you can handle in it. And it's like, wow, that doesn't, that doesn't really correlate to temptation all that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then you don't need what you don't need God at that point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and really, it's like you don't need people because yeah. this is this is a statement. Mm-hmm. It's not. I, I think this is kind of not even a part of a community where you where where you could say this. God will not give you more than you can handle. That's so f- such a final. It's a statement. It's not like hey, we're with you. We're going to walk alongside you. It's almost like he's not going to give you more than you can handle. And it relinquishes all the responsibility. It removes some responsibility. And so I think like, especially these four that we're talking about, they can bring a lot of guilt and Mm -hmm. isolation um, onto people and a lot of identity of like, I'm not good enough Mm -hmm. or I'm not, I'm not hitting the mark on, on very common things that we say. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, at the at the at the least, at best, it's like kind of a shallow facade statement. I'll put on my good Christian face. Nothing's wrong. At worst, it's like a really damaging thing. Like if you're counseling somebody and you're like, God, you. God made sure you can do this. You got this. Like, yeah, don't even come back next week. You <laughs> <got it. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why did you yeah. even come here in the first place? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you read 1 Corinthians 10, 13? Uh-huh. Yeah. I, so another one, this is one that I hear a lot. Uh, um, and, you know, there's, there's good ways, good places to use it. And I think there's a lot of need to be, you know, considering this thing. But, but it's just this idea of like, judge not lest you yourselves be judged like the take the plank out of your own eye before you judge the person before you. And this is actual scripture. This is actual scripture. This one's actually like. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is definitely biblical, but is it taken, you know, out of context? Do people run with it further than they should? What do you guys think? Yes. (laughs) There we go. Next. I think yes. All right. I I mean, I, to me, this is found, this isn't part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And, um, he's having a whole conversation about a kingdom that he's, he's ushering in, in an upside down way compared to what people are are assuming it should be. And to me, honestly, the the people that quote this the most, I feel like uh, it backfires on Christians because, you know, I think, it's one of those scriptures that because we've misquoted it and misrepresented it so much, mm-hmm. like people are like, you're not supposed to judge or, Hey, you Christian, why don't you, you know, you're judgy. Why don't you take the plank out of your own eye before telling me this mm-hmm. struggle in my life, mm-hmm. it, you know? And so I, I think that's where it becomes dangerous when we don't understand its context because it begins to backfire, you mm-hmm. know, at us. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of like, it's a response that leads to a stalemate. You know, if some if something is going wrong, and then the response is to to somebody coming approaching you about that thing, uh, don't don't judge me, right? Like we we aren't allowed to judge each other. Mm-hmm. God said so. It, it just prevents things from getting done. I mean, like what there's there's truth to it. Like you don't want to be a judgmental person, and like dispositionally, you don't mm-hmm. want to just be constantly critical of people. But like when somebody's brokenness starts to really affect that person or other people around yeah. them. Like it has to be uh, addressed in some way. You know, we don't want to respond to that in a way that just shuts down good things from happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And you get into discipline and all sorts of like, where mm-hmm. is it discipline? Where is it judgment and ultimate judgment? Because a lot of these people in this religious kind of environment were literally taking the job and some of them literally that was their job was in part of the, you know, Sanhedrin and the, the people that are following Jesus was to play the role of mediator of judge, you know, between these types of people. And and Jesus is, like I said, bringing in, uh, ushering in a new kingdom where he's trying to get them to think mm. differently about that. So this next one is a personal favorite of mine. It's allowed me to tear telephone books in half, blow up hot water <laughs> bottles, uh, bend train tracks. Uh, I mean, really just a- anything wow. you can imagine. Uh, is this the one you've got tattooed on your why are lower you not back? Doing CrossFit? Yeah, I'm just, I don't need CrossFit because let me tell <laughs> you, you I can down, do baby. all things through Christ who mm. strengthens me. Uh, that's, that's Philippians 4.13. Uh, Tim Tebow's favorite scripture, I'm assuming. Uh, <laughs> and I feel like every, like one of the first Bible verses, every preschooler learns. Mm-hmm. It's like John's 3.16 and then yeah. you need to learn like until yep. they like try jumping off the roof or something because they want to fly and, and it's like, like well, yes. you've misled this person this child in your teachings like that's not quite as literal as we want to take it have you guys ever like like read that verse like growing up and just be like like i, I don't know there were times where i was like i want to try to move this pencil <laughs> like use like, the force i'm gonna oh, use yeah. my faith christ strengthened me to do that and then, and then it never happened but. Uh, yeah that and the mustard seed one if i had you know how much how do i get enough faith to actually make this mountain move that, mm-hmm. uh, when i'm in colorado mm-hmm. i think those two tie together pretty well but it, it is like homeboy paul is in prison when he's writing this and mm. and the context homeboy of paul. all of this uh, <laughs> paul doesn't want to be in prison okay obviously like mm-hmm in this moment. And so he, yeah. So there's a lot of contextual stuff Mm -hmm. uh, that we need to, we need to draw into and uh, we're not really homeboys, but I don't know why I said that. (laughs) Forgive me if I need to be forgiven, but just felt close with Paul. In that moment though, Paul's like, I can get through this. I'm in Mm -hmm. prison. I'll make it through this. Not, 
I can bend the bars and like walk <laughs> out of here. You know, I can score a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is like like the con. He's like writing back to a, a fam, a church family mm-hmm. who's like concerned for him. Like he's in jail. Like bad stuff is happening. They're like, "Are you okay?" And his response is, "It's okay. I I can do this. Like mm-hmm. Christ is with me. I'll make it through. You don't have to worry." Kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, the next one um, is from Revelation. And uh, it's, it's a verse that says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. And to me, I, where I've heard this out of context is usually like it's an altar call kind of thing, you know? And so usually it's an altar call. The person automatically has some kind of accent um, where they're like, okay, the Lord is looking at you today. I want everyone to close their eyes. These are like the same people yeah. who say gator. Yeah, the same people who say gator. <laughs> and they're like, the Lord is knocking. Do you hear the Lord knocking at your heart right now? If you hear him knocking at your heart right now, I'm going to count on the count of three. He wants you to let him in. But you kind Jesus, of getting a British sorry. accent there. I don't <laughs> know. I, I don't is this know. an English thing? Like a UK? <laughs> want, you, <laughs> you are not promised tomorrow. You may walk out of this building and be hit by a train on the way. Do you know where you're going? The Lord is knocking. Do you hear him knocking? It's getting louder. No, that's Ray, I think that's Ray Comfort. That's Australian. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds close. Australian. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I, like I digress. I digress. Because <laughs> everybody can say it. But you're either switching. way. It's okay. No, we're more this concerned is about your accent. I'm sorry. We shouldn't be. We should be listening <laughs> yeah, to the message. So Revelation is a is a is a letter to the church. Um, and, and he's addressing specifically churches, the church of, uh, Laodicea, uh, mm. I believe in this, in this part. Um, and, um, and it's this fascinating thing. I, I got to preach on it in in the fall. And one of the phrases that I it kept bringing to mind was this paradox of you make me want to puke because it's the hot and cold, you know, and if you're hot or cold, I'll mm. spit you out of my mouth. But this is a church. These are people that believe in Jesus. And the, the phrase that I came up with was, you make me want to puke, but let's get dinner. And that Jesus is saying to, to his church, to the bride, like, oh, you're just doing things that are annoying. They're not good. You, you're, uh, you're not producing life. Oh, but I'm knocking because I still love you. You know, mm-hmm. I still want to have a relationship with you. It's, it's like I probably make my wife feel like that sometimes when I'm a jerk and not, not living up according to the covenant and the standard and the promises that we made. Um, and I'm annoying her. Like it, it's by her grace that she's saying, Oh, Alex, you're so annoying, but I'm, I'm still here for you. I'm knocking and I want to come in and eat with you. And mm. so that's not directed towards non-Christians. This is directed towards Christians with, a, I think is a, is a big part of the, where we can get it wrong or misuse it. Right. Uh, in, in the church. Mm-hmm. Another one that I think of is the one, um, the verse in Matthew eighteen twenty, where it says, where two or more are, are two or three to gather in my name, uh, there I am with them. And I guess I've heard this more in the context of, so, well, a couple, um, maybe a small church that only has a couple people mm-hmm. or a, like a smaller congregation to maybe be encouraging to them. Um, but I've also had uh, other people even in my office talk to me about, about this verse and say, well, does God hear me better when there's more people? Does mm-hmm. he, does he hear me when it's just me and him? Or is there like more, mm-hmm. is it more powerful when there's a couple people? What do you think? You're looking at me. I'm looking at you. Well, I think with this one, it, it, I mean, it, it's pretty notoriously taken out of context mm-hmm. and you hit the nail on the head. Like it is, I grew up in a lot of small churches and I heard this a lot because it was kind of a way to feel good about the few people that showed up <laughs> that night to the Bible study or whatever. But this was like much more, I mean, I'll, I'll defer to Alex if I'm wrong, but I, this is much more about witnesses. Like if you're coming to confront something and there are, you know, more, two or three there, then Jesus is, is saying, I'm there with you. Like I, I'm in agreement with you, you know, on this situation. But, uh, mm. I think there's also maybe a little bit of like, you know, uh, in the gospels, Jesus gave authority to the disciples. He said like, I, you have the keys to bind, you know, what is, what is on heaven and what, on, what is on earth. And mm-hmm. I think this is kind of like an expansion of that authority. Mm-hmm. So now it's not just the disciples who are like dying. <laughs> They're mm-hmm. not going to last much longer. Now it's, Whenever any of you are gathered, you guys 
have some authority. Like I'm with you. Yeah. So we can continue moving forward kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is also contextually before the Holy spirit comes, Jesus has promised that he's going to send the Holy spirit. And, Mm -hmm. and, uh, and for these people, this is kind of even mysterious because they, they don't fully know where Jesus is going. He's alluded to it. And so in the narrative of, of where Jesus is going as he's heading towards the cross and then he, he, you know, dies is raised again, all of those kind of things and gives us a great commission. He reveals more and more to us that his presence, he, he is omnipresent. His presence at this point could not, because of the old covenant and because of sin and, and a lot of, you know, big words we could use, wasn't just everywhere. Um, the veil hadn't been torn yet. And so uh, for these people, it was a, a different kind of thought than the Holy Spirit of God was more would come on people at certain times and then later it would leave and so for these people these people Mm -hmm. you gave me like a weird look and so uh, (laughs) (laughs) anyway so later every time you do that that lean i'm like i'm being judged (laughs) no not really judge not not. (laughs) not. (laughs) stop judging (laughs) all right so anyway the holy spirit would would show up and be a part of all our lives we are temples of the holy spirit and and the Holy Spirit resides inside of us who who have called on the name of the Lord for salvation. And so hmm. that's good. Well, so another one that I've heard, and this is, this is like a pretty controversial one. Like, Uh-oh. so I'm thinking of like Ken Ham, we got the creation museum, the mm. Ark encounter, this idea that Genesis is a science book. Uh, I don't know where you guys where you guys land in this. There's kind of like a spectrum. Wow, like bringing that to us. There's today, like huh? science book all the way over here, and then like <laughs> total myth, nothing in history over here. And there's like this spectrum where people are at. Where where are you guys on? <laughs> are we all confessing this? Yeah, let's. I, <laughs> our, mm. We've had this. There are people that strongly feel about yeah. this. I've been on a question of Mark where where Mark's talked about this, um, and we. There are people that I know uh, when it comes to, especially I think the creation account and, mm-hmm. and seven days and is yeah. it a literal day, all those kind of things that love love the word of God that are faithful followers of Jesus that mm-hmm. just land in different spots here. Because, yeah. But to me, I don't think Genesis was written uh, with science in mind. Yes, God could and God is wise enough, but I think he was establishing, I'm the creator of all of this, I create things. I create things with order. I take chaos. I can, I'm powerful. I think with just my words, nothing and turn it into something. And so inside of that, I don't think it, it demands that our earth has to be young. Uh, I don't think it demands that we need to read, uh, all of the science through the lens of Genesis. And I, and I think that's where some people kind of get tripped mm-hmm. up is, is if we overlay Genesis on all of science, then, it, then it might feel incompatible. But I think if we, if we look at science and we're like, that's not really disproving what scripture says, it's still saying, mm. where did this all come from? We have to have an answer for them that and who created order and purpose and meaning and how many years, how long did it take? When, when did a day actually occur? You know, God even called it a day before uh, the earth had a sun to go around. And so for me, I'm Mm -hmm. like, but could God have created it in seven actual days and made the earth look really old? And could, you know, plates have moved a lot uh, during the flood, worldwide flood, where it probably wasn't just rain coming down, but it was, you know, volcanoes underground and all that kind of stuff. And could Mm -hmm. that have rapidly accelerated the age of the earth? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I, like I'm not it's not a hill I'm gonna die on hmm. I thought Genesis was about baseball in the, <laughs> in the big inning oh, oh my goodness okay. but, uh, so, <laughs> so, that so, might so. be the worst <laughs> <laughs> joke I've ever heard on this podcast and I've told some bad ones yes you oh, have I bet you have <laughs> Um, but I was going to say that uh, with it being a science book, like my kids mm-hmm. obviously learn about science in, in school. And it's fun. I mean, there are ways that we can relate the Bible and Genesis and animals and things that we read about in science. I think they can be incorporated. And those are to me, like I'm always looking as a parent for teaching tools from the Bible that I can incorporate into things that they're learning. So maybe it's not like the end all beat all science book, but there are things that I mean, there's animals. Well, I can I can teach my kids about Jesus through from a science mm-hmm. les- lesson back to Genesis, but I agree. 
yeah. So much of it for me comes down to like, uh, I, you, you look at like revelation and some of the things in there and you're like, I, I know we're kind of grasping at straws to even interpret some of that stuff just cause it's really hard to mm-hmm. know what, what that means. And you read scripture like Genesis and when I try to put myself in the place of the person who is first reading that, it's a way for them to grasp what God has done. Mm. And it, and it's like, maybe it's not 100% accurate, but at least it is a way, it is a literary way for them in that time and place to understand and comprehend. And now you look where we're at now, where we can measure the age of the earth. We have the ability to do that. That doesn't mean that it needs to discredit what Genesis says, but it's a way for us to look at it and go, okay, well, this was a way for them to understand it. Now we have more understanding, which mm-hmm. is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think that's okay, where sometimes people are like, oh, well, now you're, you're saying the Bible isn't true. Well, no, but I think there's going to be a time where we're going to be able to look at what Revelation says and go, oh, okay, that's what that meant. And so, and that'll be okay too, mm-hmm. even though we don't have right now the definitive answer to that doesn't answer scientific questions yes i mean Mm -hmm. the science has to answer the question how did we get here where did we come from was it a big bang was it you know this or that like all of this began from nothing at some point in in history and so so Mm -hmm. those of us that would you know say we believe in in god and creation theory and and things like that are like god yes he's Mm -hmm. he is the author and so we can it does answer what mm-hmm. science ultimately tries to answer, but uh, yeah. I don't think they have to co they, they can coexist well. Yeah, I think they can. I mean, it's, it's a story, you know, mm-hmm. and story does a few things really well. One of them is communicate meaning like a, like a spreadsheet, a chart, a graph doesn't really mm-hmm. do a good job of explaining the why behind things. Yeah. Why am I here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, what is, why is humanity? But like this story really like, uh, I mean, it's like intentionally kind of a critique of other uh, contextual ancient Near Eastern creation myths, like like the Enuma Elish, where mm-hmm. humans, like this is a common belief surrounding the ancient Near Eastern t- like context of the Genesis account. Like humans were thought to be created out of the body of this dead evil god that the leader god killed, and he created humans out of its corpse as like a subservient slave race. Uh, and that's what people believed like humans were mm-hmm. like, that was the story that they had to gain, like gain meaning for their life. Mm-hmm. And so here comes this story saying, no, there's a completely different meaning. You were created good. Um, and, and so like, you know, bringing that in today, you know, I, I think it's good to, to talk about the facts of the story. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but you don't want to lose the meaning. The meaning is really where it's like, mm-hmm. that's where it's mm-hmm. powerful. That's Telling people you were created good, you're yeah. created to be good. That is a powerful testimony mm-hmm. from Genesis today. And God is good, and, and you God have a is real good. enemy that wants to convince you and yeah. do everything in his power to convince you that that is not true. Mm-hmm. And that same trick he played in Genesis three, he's trying to play on us. Mm. Uh, speaking of playing tricks, Ooh. Ooh. I, that was a bad I transition. Don't know, transition, but yeah. uh, I think one of the last ones <laughs> that um, <laughs> that can play tricks on someone's mind. Oh, okay. Oh, is, there we go. Good okay. recovery. Okay. Is yeah. comes from Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. It is on t shirts across the globe. Journals. Mm. Uh, yeah. Coffee mugs. And again, it's one of those. And I actually I have it on my keychain. Oh, right here. Wow. this is Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. We've got Jeremiah twenty nine eleven on the keychain. So I might <laughs> upset Matt here. Uh-oh. Pray for me. <sighs> and and it's such a it's a good passage, but taken out of context. And it says this: For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord's plans for welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and hope. Where I take issue with this is that is true. I think what God says in his word is true. That was not written to me. That wasn't written to an individual. This was written to a a nation that God had been preserving and building. Mm -hmm. And also this nation was in exile. They were being controlled by other people. Uh, at this time, it was not a good a good spot in their history, and God is using this prophet Jeremiah to to promise His people, remind them of His goodness, because they found themselves in these kind of situations before, and they will again after. But He's telling them and reminding them, "I, I'm Yahweh. 
and I have plans for you. The same plans I had told Abraham when he was going to build, I was going to build a nation, declares the Lord, don't forget, I have plans for you. I have plans for your welfare, for good, not for evil, to give you hope and a future. But when this was written to these people, most of them didn't even, like, it wasn't like next week, you know, no. it wasn't, it wasn't a promise that good and inheritance and money and blessings or what we tie wealth and good to and hope and for our future to was not tied to immediate things. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It, it, and for these people, what they would begin to see this in their nation, uh, you know, 70 or so years later, they'd start to see glimpses, but ultimately that's not even that it's about an eternity. I think that God is saying, I have chosen people and no matter what you're going through, I have, hope and plans for your future. But when we try to overlay it on just our life or our situation or think that it's got a timeline attached mm -hmm. to it, a deadline attached to it of next week or in this lifetime, uh, I think it can do a it lot can. of pain and hurt and damage to people and then not even get them to focus on eternity. Cause I think when we live with eternity in mind, um, you know, how, how we view the future uh, has a lot of impact on how we live in the present. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've also seen this verse and even the I can do all things through him who gives gives me strength mm -hmm. bring a lot of hope to people in a moment. So it's like wh there's a tandem there that like I I don't know like that I really struggle with of yeah we're taking something out of context but then also I'm applying it as like in my rational mind like as I'm cognitively thinking about like my relationship with the Lord and maybe thinking of a situation where I'm at, like maybe I'm in a hard spot and I think I can do all things because God gives me strength. And that's a mm -hmm. promise that I can take from the Bible. So I feel like that this tension, like mm -hmm. even when we're talking about things that are taken out of context and I don't know if it's just because our culture hasn't maybe like applied looking at the whole thing, but like I've seen people that are really struggling emotionally, like look at that and say, I I'm in a bad yeah. spot now, but I know that God has a plan for me and that they are good things. So how do we, well, I don't I think know, the how problem, do we set in that when tension? When you hear God prosper me and people take it as, okay, well, I'm guaranteed nice cars, houses, preachers and sneakers, you know, just like this idea of that's, that's a guarantee or that mm. God, that I will, I will never get sick. I'll never experience any pain. Um, mm. You know, those types of ideas are just wrong. That's mm -hmm. not true. We're not right. promised that on the, in this life, you know? And so I think someone can take inspiration from it, but mm. then when they, then put, as a, as a leader or a spiritual advisor or anything like that, when you're talking to people, if you were to mislead them in a way to think, well, now you're just never going to encounter any problems because of the scripture, yeah. you know, it's mm -hmm. just, that is, that mm -hmm. would be a lie. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. yeah, it sets up strange expectations. And I think it also, it also kind of gets connected to a guilting people for not having enough faith, mm -hmm. like taking these kind of things out of context, like you're not prospering. Oh, well, you must mm -hmm. not have faith. Yeah, uh, or, or something like that. You're not praying hard enough. You're not tithing mm -hmm. enough. You're not it, this yeah. or that or whatever. It you know? delegitimizes the pain that people experience. And yeah. like, there's other passages in Jeremiah that like do talk about uh, like real like they're they're they have a time frame to them. Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah sixteen one through. I think this would just be fun to share with you guys. Go for this it. is this is a word from the Lord to Jeremiah, and this you know we can maybe we can maybe share this, but. Uh, you must not marry and have sons or daughters in this place. Uh, for if you do, they will die of deadly diseases mm -hmm. and they will be mourned and buried. <laughs> it's like, that's the Lord's promise to Jeremiah in the moment. That's like, so weird. I have that tattooed on my shoulder you do. blade. Yeah, yeah. I've got, that's, a, that's I've got a real inspiration key, to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, like, don't, these can't be used to delegitimize pain mm -hmm. that people experience. And again, I think it's, it's context matters so much mm -hmm. inside of scripture. And so, yeah you can have faith and hope in it. And I've found great comfort and hope in it, but understanding the full context of I can, I can get through anything through because of the strength that, mm. that Christ has given me. Um, but having eternity, you know, as the ultimate destination and the goodness of that and, and the trueness of this kingdom. And I get glimpses of the kingdom now, mm. but if I am just, you know, my friends got cancer or they're, they just got a diagnosis back or they're dealing with losing their dad. And I don't really know what their, mm. their, 
scriptural knowledge is for me to just write either of those in a card with, with nothing, I think is, is irresponsible of Mm -hmm. me to, to do that without kind of presenting, you know, the full goodness of this, because they're going to miss the, the extreme goodness. They're going to only think about right now. And that's just a sliver. If they get out of that process, that's just a sliver of the, the goodness of eternity and the promises that are there. And, uh, I would be robbing them in some ways to not even let them see the full picture. And Mm -hmm. I think that's where Mm -hmm. throwing it on the back of a t-shirt where a bunch of people can read it without context and, you know, maybe wearing it in your eye black or whatever, um, are painful. So why do you, what, why is it on your keychain? Well, you know, I got the keychain for my graduation celebration and I knew that what they meant behind it was, you know, God has, God has plans for you. God has a future. Uh, stay with the faith is mm-hmm. really kind of what mm-hmm. it represented to me at the time. So yeah, that's good. Know. Yeah, that's good. Well, we didn't tackle them all. We got through quite a few of them. Mm-hmm. I think there there are some uh, that I think we could dedicate whole episodes to. Uh, just kind of breaking down the misuse. Uh, and so we save those for later, right? That's the plan. I don't know. We don't really have a plan. Anyways, uh, <laughs> we, have plans. we have, we know the plans we have for this <laughs> podcast. Yeah. We're good. Great uh, plans. Uh, no, evil. not no, for evil. Yeah. yeah no. uh, Matt, thanks for your time. Thanks yeah, for hanging thanks out for with us. Thanks for inviting me. This so has been fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's fun to have you here. Some, you know, different perspective, bring some new energy, very bright. I'm just getting a bright literally. energy yeah. from you. Mm-hmm. I don't think just literally your shirt. I, yeah, I think, no, and I think joke. it's fun for our, our church to hear from our residents that these aren't like these JV, you know, people coming to us so we can help educate them. And yeah. then one day they will be really good ministers. Like yeah. you are now and, mm-hmm. and God's using you now. Mm-hmm. And I think Amen. that's, that's so cool to, mm-hmm. it's a gift for us. You're sharpening us too. So yes, thanks for that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. So thank you. Thanks for everybody who's listening and um, part of this conversation here today. If you have any questions or concerns, you can reach out to us on social media at CCC Omaha, or you can send us an email to podcast at cccomaha.org. We'd love to hear from you, but until then, we'll talk to you later.